Greetings and welcome to an LGR thing where I am surrounded by stuff. Uh, this is actually how I'm often uh, appearing behind the camera. But anyway, yeah, I was over here the other week at this point, uh, just going through a bunch of things, trying to do some organizing and find some stuff that I wanted to bring to uh, Elmhurst, Illinois at the VCF Midwest Festival, which is what I was going to be attending. And I did, and it was awesome. Expect a video about that here in the near-ish future if all goes well. I got a lot of footage to edit down. But while I'm working on that and other LGR projects, I just got to thinking, looking through all this, like, I have a lot of mice, computer mice, that is, or mouses, if you want to get all fancy or whatever. But uh, yeah, whatever you want to call them, input devices uh, that plug into a mouse or, or use a cursor, mouse cursor kind of thing. I got a lot of them, and a lot of them don't really merit a full dedicated video. They're all odd, so they could be on oddware, but at the same time, I just wanted to talk about a few of them, starting with this right here, the, the mouse burger. And uh, this is one that I actually took to the show and it was kind of a surprise hit. I was surprised how many people were uh, really amused by just seeing this and being able to use it and uh, wondering why I hadn't done a video on it. So yeah, I gotta do a video, but just over there in that same section of the darkness back there, uh, I have this, I've had for years, the Corvette Motor Mouse, as well as the Media Mouse, Multimedia Audio Mouse that sings or makes noises. I don't know exactly. So let's just look at all three. Alrighty, so first up we have double cheeseburgers, a couple of mouse burgers by the RTC company, apparently. Uh, model Ron 55. Yes, serial mouse for PC, XT, AT, and compatible with a two year warranty. Uh, which years were those? I don't know. How much did it originally cost? I also don't know. It's probably gonna be a common theme across pretty much all of these. I've done some basic research just to see if I could find any old listings in newspapers and magazines or anything. Nothing really concrete. These are both here thanks to donations from LGR viewers, uh, Michael and Steven in this case. Thank you both. They just happened to send mouse burgers at the same time. Apparently this one cost $2.50 second hand. And uh, yeah, they were each unused. So this one I have already opened up and brought to the show, VCF Midwest, and it kind of kicked off this mouse video because I was uh, genuinely and happily pleased to see that so many folks came by and were just like, what is this? Now let me just go ahead and open it up. Oops, there's a disc on the floor. All right, so yeah, it's, it's a cheeseburger, a rather shiny, greasy looking burger that happens to be a cereal mouse and uh, yeah, ball mouse. All these are gonna be ball mouse devices. So yeah, just, I guess seeing this over there on the LGR table at the show just kinda, well, it stood out from the crowd. All right, get that fresh ball inserted right there and lock that up. And that's that. Uh, yeah, of course, a lot of folks were coming by being like, is that a burger? hockey puck mouse for the Apple iMac or something, and it's actually about the same size as that, but uh, no, it's it's just a serial mouse, three buttons, and no scroll wheel, of course, this predates that being a thing. But yeah, nine pin serial, and that's the, uh, you know, that's all that is. You plug it into a computer and it works. And uh, it also came with some things that I genuinely haven't looked at yet. It got a registration card for the Ron Sonic Trading Corporation. All right, and mouse, trackball user's manual. <laughs> Very generic. Congratulations on getting this mouse or trackball. I'm assuming this is just going along with whatever other mouse or input devices they sold. Uh, yeah, it's, it's probably just a generic program. Whatever, I guess we'll look at it real quick. No mention of burgers whatsoever in there. And regarding its cheeseburger aesthetic, you know, how close is it actually to a single, I don't know, maybe a quarter pound cheeseburger. Well, there you go. Yeah, I didn't get one with the same toppings at all. Just picked up something quick. Anyway, I don't know which one is more comfortable, but actually this one for sure. All right, enough silliness. Let's get this hooked up to the wood grain 46. Yeah, Windows 3.1 going on the LGR wood grain 46 over there and the Burger mouse plugged into the serial port. Or I guess the mouse burger, <laughs> which I don't know why they labeled it that way. Mouse burger makes it sound like a burger that's made of mice, which I, isn't that the like part of the plot of Fievel Goes West? 
mouse burgers. I just remembered that. Oh man, childhood weirdly coming up. Anyway, uh, yeah, you don't need to do anything for setting up Windows 3.1 because it just looks for a mouse. So it's ready to go. It's here, it's working. All this comes with is just a driver for DOS and a test program and my light just died. Actually, it doesn't look terribly bad like this, but let me, let me go get a battery. <laughs> Cut grief. Oh man, go away for a week. <laughs> Forget to recharge all my batteries. Okay, so what was I saying? All right, yeah, so it's a mouse, uh, works fine. Let's uh, open something up just to give it a quick test of whatever. Yeah, so I do run into that where it's just like, get different sensitivities between the X and Y. So it makes it a little unpredictable. I don't know what setting it's using by default because uh, if you saw it in the box, maybe, it does have different DPI settings, supposedly up to 4200. So yeah, this is what the installer looked like, just showing it again. Choose your mouse type in a couple ways, serial, uh, general three button, and then you can choose from different things here. I went into manual and installed it to the maximum resolution and uh, PC mouse mode three button is what I had it set to, I believe. And if we go into this, is just the, uh, the test program and you can see the, yeah. So I have it set to uh, max resolution and it is really sensitive. Let's change that. So yeah, here it is all the way at the lowest. And it's too low, put it to right about here. That's about right for DOS, because, you know, you don't have a ton of resolution. And go into, uh, yeah, PC mouse mode, which I believe is three button. Oh, and it also has all of these pop-up utilities, just a TSR that runs and provides menus that you can add to these types of programs if you want. So if we wanted, we could open the DOS pop-up menu and yeah. There you go, we just have a, a, a pop-up thing here with all of these different common and not so common DOS commands that you can open up with your mouse only. Descent, why not? How many people played Descent with a cheeseburger? I'm just kind of curious if this will allow me to use all three buttons. So yeah, by default, we've got left and right. See if I can do flare. There we go. Yeah, so we can use all three buttons. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Again, I can tell that the sensitivity is slightly different between X and Y, but. Yeah. It's honestly not too bad. Whoops. I'm supposed to rescue hostages, not shoot them in the face. I mean, considering this is a cheeseburger, it's not too bad. Honestly, having used like the iMac mouse puck mouse uh, for a good number of hours over the years on various earlier Macs, uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't grow up with it or anything, but I have used it. This is not too different from that, but you're still just gripping onto like the condiments. It kind of gives you something extra to grip onto. <laughs> so yeah, I don't hate the burger mouse. I mean. It's not amazing. I would never choose it over other things, I don't think, unless just for the novelty factor. But uh, yeah, the mouse burger, burger mouse, it's okay. It's just that X and Y thing. And uh, like with Duke 3D, I was playing Duke match with some folks at VCF Midwest and I was playing it with this at first. Yeah, this mouse being hooked up, the X and Y difference, I didn't know was such a different thing. So I had to, uh, I played it that way and it sucked at first because I couldn't aim up or down reliably and uh, just went to the options and adjusted for it. With that being in place, it's not a terrible mouse, despite being a cheeseburger. Do wish it had some like cheeseburger themed software though. All right, next up we've got the Corvette Motor Mouse, something that I picked up on eBay some years ago, just because, I mean, look at it. It's a Corvette, a little C4 there, and it is a mouse with other assorted things, yes. The great new three button mouse for your computer. IBM PC and Windows compatible. But the thing that really intrigued me was not only the shape, I've got a lot of mice or mouses shaped like cars, but uh, this one. All right, let's just read a little bit of it here. Uh, once you've taken a motor mouse for a test drive, your old mouse just won't do. We've combined style, excellent, da 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 da. But yeah, it comes with this cursor control software, changes the look of your cursor to the motor mouse you are driving. 
and it runs under Microsoft Windows. Also, you can rev the engine, sound of the horn, and move out across the old applications with new style and instantly switch back to a precision cursor. I mean, that just sounds wonderful. Let us check it out. The mouse that roars. Yeah, that was the other thing. I was like, what roars? Uh, I guess it just is revving engine noises, but it can play back. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much all I was expecting there. So just another nine pin serial connector. We've got the mouse hanging out and uh, some stuff. Software. Not concerned about preserving <laughs> the package. So yeah, oh hey look, we got a blue, kind of a Mega Atari ST looking disc there. Uh, high density, Motor Mouse with lovely font. That, they yeah, they put some effort into this. Motor Mouse products, 1992 version 1.0 made in Canada. And we've also got actual instructions this time <laughs> for the device itself. So not just generic, like whatever mouse device we happen to sell applies to this. Yeah, looks pretty simple. We've also got some more here. Why do we have two of them? I don't think there's any uh, real big surprises here. Yeah, if you have a sound card, yeah, just plug in your speakers. If not, they've included a PC speaker sound driver. Well, that's handy. I remember using those as a kid when I didn't have a sound card. And we'd play like wave files through Windows, just through the PC speaker. Yeah, fun times. Wow, and look at this, we've got like I was expecting twisty ties or something, but it's like these stretchy little thingies. How classy. Oh crap. Well, you know, uh, it answers what the inside looks like. Uh. <laughs> Off to a great start. <laughs> well, whatever. Let's see if we can put this thing back together. Yeah, it's just a normal mouse in there. There's a black mouse ball. I don't see those very often. Usually they're beigey, gray, white. It's like that's really dark. I like it. Little micro switches. Yeah, it's just a mouse in there. It's got, it uses the uh, Genius mouse chip. I've seen that on a number of devices from back in the day. So there is the foam. So this one's got ball already inserted, of course, unlike the burger, which you had to insert yourself. And then uh, yeah, there's a little switch down there too, it looks like. Let's see what that... What does that do? So you can you can either have it installed replacing your original mouse or have it installed beside it. Interesting. The serial number 66. Don't know how many of these were made, but uh, I've seen a number on eBay. And uh, yeah, let's go with this sadness. Maybe that'll just... <laughs> uh, oh man, little pieces keep falling off. Oh. Okay, well, that's kind of on there. I'll see if I can get it more attached before I actually test it. But yeah, you just sort of press down on the hood in three different spots. It's, it's literally just split apart there. It's not bad, I guess, in terms of the accuracy. I assume they actually license this from GM or whatever. <laughs> All right, let's try out the Corvette motor mouse, uh, such as it is. Alrighty, so Corvette motor mouse glued back together somewhat. Uh, good as I can get it anyway. And I have the motor mouse software for Windows installed. And yeah, it does have a DOS installation. I put it in this uh, directory here, but everything that's interesting opens in Windows, so. All right. And it just straight away installs this cruise control area here. And we can go into a special setup for the motor mouse control. We have acceleration settings if you want to do that. Uh, yeah, and that's just mouse acceleration. I am not a fan of it pretty much ever. And this, it actually lets you choose the different vertical and horizontal sensitivities right there, which uh, by default, Windows doesn't let you do. The burger mouse honestly could have used that. As it is though, it feels pretty good so far. And then really this is the star of the show, the cruise control application. All right, this is what changes your cursor to an animated Corvette. I honestly wasn't expecting it to look this cool. Uh, it takes a second to get used to because of the pointer is just, yeah, look at that. There's like 
Yeah, it's pretty neat. I didn't expect that at all. A lot of times uh, you'll get these custom cursors and it's just a regular little arrow with like a graphic beside it or something. But no, this just animates. It's neat. And then you can also change the car size there like I just did. You can change the color as well. So we got a nice yellow Corvette and a white one. I don't know if the mouse came in different colors too, but you can change it here. We'll just put it to what the mouse is. Sound on and off. I guess that button right there turns the, yeah, animation. And uh, that's the panel we've already seen. And then there's these, which just puts little people going past, or like, here's a dog. There's a dog. And here's another person with like a, a tire. Yeah, a little bit of getting used to with that pointer. There we go. Yeah, because sometimes you'll see it's like, yeah, right there. That frame in particular is a couple frames that have like that. So I end up wanting to point over there or I want to point with this part of the Corvette instead of like the very tip of it. I don't know. It's like, eh, it's slightly weird, but it's fine, I guess. <laughs> we'll see what it's like to uh, paint something with. Oh yeah, way more consistent results with this. It's just that mouse cursor makes it a little strange, but it's cool to look at. Like, I don't know. I would have thought that would have been the, the neatest thing ever <laughs> as a kid. And then I'd probably want to turn it off immediately like I'm about to do. Yeah. Oh, that's so much better. All right. Yeah, let's, oh, okay. Let's try it out with the game. I mean, yeah, this seems like the obvious choice. turbo on. Turbo doesn't help too much. It does slow it down a little though, so let's just go against that. Eh. Okay, car is farting. That is good. Let's go over here. <laughs> All right. Ooh. Okay, that's cool. How do I accelerate? That. Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh crap. Oh crap. <laughs> oh man. What's brake? Do I not have a brake? <laughs> I don't think I have a brake, honestly. Left button accelerates. Okay, we're in the water. Let's try that again. Okay, I was thinking maybe one of the other buttons changed gears or something, but uh, apparently not. Come on now, shift. <laughs> it's in auto. I just ran over a person. I was looking at the gears. All right, so let's just focus on the steering because, oh my goodness, turn the sound off. Yeah, uh, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. A little overly sensitive, but I think we can change. Nope, it's at the lowest sensitivity already. So a little overly sensitive, perhaps. Uh, I'm just gonna run over a nun real quick. This game is fantastic. <laughs> All right, so you can play VET with a Corvette mouse. It's pretty awesome. Uh, you know, and, and the shape isn't really that bad for like a mouse. You get this, like the hump of this whole area of the car that doesn't feel too bad. And it's a little weird clicking on a hood, but I am again, kind of impressed here. For, a, for a, a, the clicking feels terrible, I will give it that, because you're just like, eh. but maybe that's just because half of the stuff in there is broken. It's like you're clicking and then it's like extra creakiness. And I feel myself though, with uh, my thumb and pinky just sort of going into the, whoops. Uh, yeah, the rear wheels. But yeah, so other than the ways that it sucks, it's not bad. Yeah, Corvette. And that little Windows 3.1 app, I mean, that's just charming. All the sound effects and the animations, yeah. It's not a bad little novelty gift. Okay, and last, but maybe least, I don't know, I guess we'll find out, is the media mouse with sound capabilities. Yes, it's a mouse with a built-in speaker, I presume. The multimedia audio mouse, a singing mouse that everybody loves. You can sing like a bird, bark like a dog, or roar like a Ferrari. Okay, I, maybe it doesn't even have a speaker. Maybe it's literally just the software doing it. I don't know, actually, now that I think about it. Yeah, like it just says interactive audio mouse. Generates sounds selected by the user. 
kind of sounds like what we just saw with the Corvette. Okay, well, this is probably less interesting than I thought it was initially. I mean, a mouse with a speaker wouldn't be completely unheard of. I've got uh, keyboards with speakers and speakers that go in drive bays and speakers. And just everything had speakers at one point. Okay, we got some software and a piece of paper, registration. That is definitely just a mouse. All right. So the software is going to be the only unique thing about this. It's just a generic ball mouse. It's got the little ball in there already. Let's see what we got here. Uh, mouse setup disc. Win cursor Melody Mouse. Keep changing the name on us here. All right. Enjoy the world's first multimedia mouse. That might just be debatable. All right, so we got software and uh, it, yeah, the software lets you play sound effects. Simple enough hints. Once you finish it, you'll find a program group. These are terrible hints. Let's plug it in. See what the sounds sound like. Alrighty, media mouse plugged in. Windows 3.1 is just working well, sort of. That is very jittery and not always working horizontally. Hmm. All right, well, yeah, everything is nice and clean in there. It's just barely working like those rollers are, I mean, you know, this, this is the one that felt the cheapest out of all of them, but like, <laughs> this is next level cheap, mm, kind of admirable. It didn't actually come with any kind of mouse control panel just came with this Melody Mouse software on the disc. Got that installed. So let's see what this does. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> oh no. It just makes noise as you move it and it slows it down and it's so laggy and terrible as it has to load in each sound. <laughs> oh, as if it weren't utter garbage already. This is bad. Okay. So, wow, we have two different options. Melody Mouse and Sound Wall. Uh, Pixeless per play? Let's do that, because I don't want it literally all the time. <laughs> okay. So every time you move 500 pixels, it plays a terrible sound effect, like from Kid Pix. What is this? All right, let's see what sound wall does. Okay. All right, so that's playing Do Re Mi, I guess, and here's the zoo. Like one note at a time. Why does it do it when you move the mouse? I am so confused. This is so dumb. I keep looking at it like I'm gonna figure something out. <laughs> Ah! All right, let's, let's go back to Melody Mouse. Let's, let's change the minimum, change the wave set. Look at how awful this is. Well, this is cursed. Uh, let's go into DOS and load up a game. Yeah, just kind of wondering how it'll do in terms of like that jitteriness. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. I'm all out of gum. Cool. It seems mostly okay now. Maybe I sort of broke it in a little bit. Again, the, uh, the Y sensitivity is way more than the X, but you can address that in the game settings. And this actually, uh, Duke 3D here, like I said earlier at the show, I had it set for the burger mouse. So anyway, it's, o it's okay. <laughs> All right. 
Open the doors. Tired of this crap. Oh man, suddenly I'm an E1M1 again. Time to blow up in the corner. All right, so the mouse is functional. <laughs> you know, it kind of works. But like at the same time, oh man. Yeah, that gets, it's okay in here. I don't know, it's just having some weird issues there at the beginning. It's, it's Windows, man. Try that final wave set just because. Oh, drums. This, it's so obnoxious. <laughs> and that's like the only defining feature of this mouse is that software. Wow, terrible mouse, really annoying software. I am very glad we experienced this together. And if you want to download any of these discs, by the way, check the video description. Okay, well, that is about it for this episode of LGR. And uh, yeah, let me know what you thought. Hopefully this was entertaining. It was pretty fun for me, actually, just moving from one thing to another. I don't know, I kind of like doing that sometimes instead of just focusing on one item for 30 minutes. So I don't know if I'll do any more of these, but uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts and uh, maybe some other things that you'd like to see grouped together. Like just have weird keyboards and weird drive bay things and weird speakers. Like there's all kinds of things I can think of. So yeah, either way, uh, beefier videos here on LGR are on the way in the works, including VCF Midwest. And of course, I've made plenty of other stuff if you'd like to check out the back catalog. And as always, thank you very much for watching.